OpenAI has just announced agent mode. It's pretty impressive and lots of people are talking about it, so I wanted to bring you along for my first look at the tool and so that we can explore it together. First, let's look at the details of the announcement. So on the announcement article, you can see that it's summed up nicely with ChatGPT can now do your work for you using its own computer, handling complex tasks from start to finish. Now, this is a pretty long and detailed article, so I'm just gonna summarize it for you now. OpenAI says that agent mode is a natural evolution of operator and deep research, which are two OpenAI tools that often are used in tandem. Agent mode is essentially giving ChatGPT access to its own virtual computer, which it uses inside of a closed environment to complete the tasks that you give it. It also has access to the browser through two browsers. One, a text-based browser, which it uses to read content on a web page, and number two, a visual browser Browser, which it uses to view images and to interact with elements such as buttons, uh, input boxes and things like that. It can also do things like write code, generate images, presentations, documents, Excel documents and a whole bunch more. So it's kind of bringing a lot of the OpenAI tools full circle whereas previously they were kind of compartmentalized so now it's a nice kind of bring it all into the center into one product. That's the idea anyway. So inside of ChatGPT, to use agent mode, all you have to do is click the tools button here and then select agent mode. We can now input any task that we want to in a similar way that we usually would if we were interacting with ChatGPT in general. Let's give it a simple task, which I've already saved to my clipboard. So I'm just going to paste it in there. I'm doing some simple shopping for a new outfit. Using the levi.com website, can you find a pair of black jeans and a cool top, which I could wear in a casual outfit? I wear a size W32, length 32 in jeans and a size medium in t-shirts and then we're just going to get that running so now ChatGPT is going to set up the virtual computer as well as start thinking about the process that it needs to take to complete the task and we can see here in this window here that we'll have a preview of exactly what the agent is doing itself you'll see as it goes on but you can actually scrub through here to have a look at exactly what the agent has done. So I could leave, go make a coffee, come back, and then scrub through this to make sure that the agent hasn't done anything that I didn't want it to do. Let's just leave it running for a few minutes to see what happens. Okay, so we've actually run into an issue here, which is that levis.com doesn't allow us to access their website as an agent. Of course, this is not ideal, but this is potentially one of the limitations of agentic tools like this. So what I'm going to do to demo this is actually give it a different prompt or ask it to go to a different website to try and find me that new outfit. So now hopefully ASOS.com will allow us to access their website through agent mode, and then we should be able to continue with the task. I wonder why Levi.com doesn't actually work with agent mode. I wonder what blockers they've put in place to prevent uh, agentic tools and automated tools from accessing their website. But anyway, ASOS.com works really well, so let's continue and let it do its thing. One of the really cool things about agent mode is that you can actually interrupt it when it's uh, halfway through its process. So for example, let's say that I've changed my mind and actually I am a size W32, 34 instead, because let's say I've got longer legs. I can just say, actually, I forgot forgot my size is W32L34. So I can interrupt it and it will now decide that actually it needs to go and find those jeans in the correct size and not the previous size that I asked it to find. One of the other really cool tools within ChatGPT and also agent mode, even though you can use this feature outside of agent mode, is connectors. Uh, where you can essentially connect your ChatGPT account with things like GitHub, Google Drive, Gmail, uh, any of these third-party applications to give agent mode access to the information that you have in those third-party apps. So you could essentially say, summarize my emails for me that I received this morning, and it will go ahead and do that for you. You can do that by, for example, connecting GitHub here, or you can click to connect more. Now, unfortunately, if you are in the UK like me, or if you're in one of these other regions, you are limited by the number of uh, third-party tools that you can access. I'm assuming this is because of things like GDPR and different privacy laws that we have here. You can find the full list on their website, so if you want to check that out, you can do. Things like custom integrations and MCP are currently in beta testing mode, so while they aren't available yet, and I can't imagine they'll be available uh, really soon in the UK, uh, if you are in the US or another one of those regions, 
you are likely going to see or potentially already have access to tools like MCP and custom integrations. Let's scrub through what our agent has done so far. We can see that it's opened ASOS.com and it has started filtering for the correct size, uh, searching for Levi's black jeans. Making sure to select specific brand and it's found a few products. It's checking if they're in stock, looking at different options. For example, it's trying to find maybe a cheaper option. So it's found a pair of jeans and it's currently now looking for a t-shirt using the exact same approach of doing a search on the website and then filtering down for size, making sure it's the correct brand. I'm going to pause this for a minute. And I'm going to wait until it's finished this task and then I'll be right back with you. So now it's finished the task and it has returned an option for the jeans that it wants me to buy and also the t-shirt that it has found for me. And it's put it into a nice table here with some key details, the item name, the price, and also what, uh, what it's describing as evidence, which I guess is to make sure that the product that it's found is fitting the description that I, or the requirements that I gave it originally. I can't find anywhere to actually open a link to the products, which would be nice. It would be nice to be able to open it in my local browser and uh, check them out for myself. Add these to a basket. So we're essentially adding another step or instruction to this task on the back of what it's already completed. And it should memorize exactly what it's done so far and then um, continue from where it left off instead of starting from scratch again. So it's currently having issues adding it to the basket. And I wonder if this is because of the location of the, uh, of the VPC. So instead, I'm just going to interrupt it and say, return the links to the um, to the items that you originally found. I will purchase them myself. So now I've interrupted it and it's hopefully going to just return those links for me. And finally, it has returned the links to the product. So let's actually take a look here. It's going to give us a warning and then we can open the link ourselves. I can select the product. So it says it was low in stock. I wonder if that had anything to do with it, not adding it to the basket. And then this is the t-shirt that it also found for me. Again, has the correct size and we've now added these to our basket. So overall, I think that agent mode is a really exciting addition to the ChatGPT toolbox. Of course, it has some of its challenges, uh, like what we've seen here with not being able to access certain websites or not being able to perform certain actions due to website uh, restrictions on the on the web front end instead of it being an issue with agent mode. But I do think that this interface is probably the most user friendly that I've seen in all of the other AI agents that I've worked with. I think it's a shame that because I'm in the UK, you have limited access to things like MCP and external connectors, but hopefully those things will be uh, fixed and included with time. Agent mode is currently only available to Plus and Pro users, which is a shame for the free users, but I imagine this service is pretty expensive to run, so it kind of makes sense. So that's the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please leave a like down below, hit the subscribe button if you're new, and tap the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. See ya.